Let's learn object-oriented programming for tkinter. Hey guys, John Alder here, and I was hanging out at the tkinter.com members only area last week, and someone asked me why there aren't more tutorials on class-based object-oriented tkinter. And I thought to myself, yeah, why aren't there? So I've decided to create a new playlist on the channel to teach exactly that. In this first video, we'll set up our starter code and build a simple app with some text and some buttons that runs a simple function that changes the text on the screen. This will give us a good foundation to build on to create more complicated apps later on in the playlist. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor in the Git Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this object-oriented tkinter series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So I've got a blank file here. I'm just calling it classes.py. So let's create some starter code. So whenever we're using tkinter, as you should probably know, if you know anything about tkinter, we always need to import it. So let's go from tkinter. Let's import everything. So really, that's kind of all we need. Besides that, we need to create an app. So I'm going to create an app called app. And this is going to be an app class, which we haven't created yet. And then let's build out our main loop. Let's go app dot main loop. And that's it. So let's uh, define and instantiate our app. This is slightly different than functional programming, the way we set this up. But in functional programming, we still have to create a main loop. So that's sort of familiar. So all right, let's come up here and let's create our app. So first, we're going to build a class. And I'm going to call this app. And we want to inherit TK. Now, this is an uppercase T and a lowercase K. And it looks like a weird kind of weird looking K there. But that's just how Sublime does it. That's the font that it uses. Kind of looks like a cursive K, but maybe even kind of looks like an R. But anyway, it's a K. And then with all class-based programming, we always start out by defining an init function, an initialization function. And we do underscore, underscore, init, underscore, underscore, or dunder, double underscore. And then we always want to pass in self. So inside of this, we need a super call here. And then again, we want an underscore, underscore, init, underscore, underscore, and then brackets. Now we don't need to pass anything in here because this guy doesn't inherit anything. Uh, but this obviously inherits the self, which is our TK program, which we've imported up here. So okay, that looks good. Now, whenever we create apps, we always want a title, uh, maybe an icon, and the size of the thing. So to create a title using class based object oriented programming for Kinter, we just call self dot title. And then we pass in whatever we want. So I'm going to say tkinter.com object oriented programming. All right. And uh, yeah, there we go. And now for an icon, let's go self.icon bitmap. And with regular functional programming, we would just call, you know, root.title or root.icon bitmap. And we would have named our app root instead of app. Here, we're just using self because this is, we've passed in self which is basically like, like passing in root, passing in app, right? So we call icon bitmap. Now I've got a little icon file in this directory where I saved this file. It's also in the images directory and it's called uh, codemy.ico for, for my other coding channel. Uh, there we go. And then finally to size this thing, we just call self.geometry and then pass in our dimensions. I want this to be say 700 by 450, whatever. Okay, so that looks pretty pretty good. We can go ahead and save this and just see what this has created for us. Head over to our terminal. I'm in my ctkinter.com directory and let's run python classes.py. And when we do, we get this thing. It's got a little icon. It's got our title here and it's 700 by 450, which is what we would expect. Okay, pretty good. Let's create some widgets. So there's a couple of different ways to do this. We'll look at both in this video. But right now inside this init function, I'm going to just define my widgets right here. Now, if you have a more complicated app with a lot of widgets, you're going to probably break this out of the init function. We'll look at doing that in just a bit. But for right now, we've just got a couple of widgets. So we sort of just want to put them in the init function because it's super easy that way. So let's go self and I'm going to name this my underscore label. And this is going to be a label. And we want to put it in self. Now with functional programming, we would put it in root. But again, this is class based programming, object oriented programming. So we put it in self. And I want the text to say, hello, world. And let's give this a font of, let's say, Helvetica with a size of 42, make it nice and big. So, okay, now we can also pack this. Let's go self dot my underscore label dot pack. And if we want to give this a pad Y of like 
20 to push down the screen a little bit. That looks good. So we've got a label. Let's also create a quick button. So let's go self dot my underscore button. And this is going to be a button. We want to put it in self. We want the text to say uh, change text. And let's give this a command of self dot change. Now, normally with functional programming, we would give this a command of change, but with functional, but with object oriented programming, we do self dot change. Now we don't have this function yet. We'll create it in just a second. But for now, let's go ahead and self dot my underscore button dot pack this guy. And let's also give him a pad Y of 20 push down the screen a little bit. So, okay, we've got these two widgets. Now we need this function that we just created. Now we don't want to put it in the init functions. We want to put it in the class, but outside of the init function. So you see here's our init function. It's lined up with this new function we're creating and we want to pass in self. And for now, let's just pass. So let's save this and run it just to make sure this text and button looks okay. So let's head back over here, run this guy again. And we've got this app, it says hello world, we've got a button, it doesn't do anything yet. But okay, so far so good. So now let's create this function to change the text in the label every time we click the button. So we can do that by just calling self dot my label dot config. And we want to put the text equal to let's say good by world. And that's really it. So we go ahead and save this. Now, we can call self dot my label, because our function here inherited self. It's grabbing all of this stuff basically and passing it in here, or at least allowing us to access it by calling self dot whatever. So let's go ahead and save this, head back over here and see if that worked. So when I click the button, it says goodbye world. Woohoo! Okay, so when we click it again, nothing happens. Let's make it to where every time we click the button, it changes from hello world to goodbye world to hello world to goodbye world. So how can we do that? Well, let's come up here to our init function and let's create a variable. So let's create, let's call it a status variable. And so let's just go self dot status and let's set that equal to true, right? So here we can come down into our function and run some logic. So let's go if self dot status equals true, then we want to change the text to say goodbye world. And then let's change our self dot status to false, right? So else, Let's copy this and paste it again. And instead of it saying goodbye world, let's have it say hello world, and then change it back to true. So if it's true, it'll change it to goodbye world and set it to false. Then if it's false, it'll change it back to hello world and set it back to true. So it'll toggle back and forth and keep track of where it is. So okay, let's go ahead and save this head back over here, run this guy again. And now we can click goodbye world. If we click it again, hello world. Every time we click it, it changes back. Excellent. Very good. So this is a very simple app, but there's a lot of stuff going on here, right? So we've got a function that sort of resides outside of our init function that this button can access. We've got a variable that sort of changes over time and can be used again outside of this init function. So we're not having to make things global and mess with all that sort of thing which is kind of always a hassle and always freaks people out because nobody likes to use global variables. They learned decades ago that global variables are bad. So it freaks people out. I use them all the time. I don't care, but a lot of people that bothers. So this kind of solves that right away, right? We can always just use these variables because we're inheriting the self, the app, the initialization, oops, the initialization here, all of this stuff, it just gets inherited here. So very cool. And, uh, very interesting. Now, I mentioned back at the beginning of this video that this is a very simple app, we only have a couple of widgets. So we're just putting them in our knit function. What if it's going to be more complicated than that? And you don't want to just load up your init function with tons and tons of widgets? How would you do that? Well, we can create another, for instance, frame outside of this function, and reference it and call it whenever we want. So let's do that. So let's uh, create a frame outside this function. So we can call it anything we want. I'm just going to call it my underscore frame. And this is going to uh, inherit self. So we want all of this stuff to be available. So here we've got this frame, we're essentially calling a new frame class, right? So we've got our app class, right? So now we want to create a whole new class. 
So we do that outside of everything. So let's go class, and this is my underscore frame. And this is going to be a tkinter frame, so we have to pass in frame. Now, remember up here, we imported everything from tkinter, so we can use all the widgets. Like, this is just a label. This is just a button, right? This is just a frame. It's very much like coming up here and going, you know, frame and putting it in self and doing whatever, but we're passing that in here. So just like with our initialization function up here, we need to do all of this init stuff, but it's slightly different now. So let's go define underscore underscore init underscore underscore. Now up here, we passed in self and we still need to do that down here. We still need to pass in self, but we also need to pass in a parent. And that's going to be this thing here, which is this thing here, which is this thing here. So we're sort of connecting these two. We're saying, hey, make this big class here, our app class, make that the parent, and then make this guy sort of the child of that parent, right? So that's how that works. Now we need a colon here. And inside of here, we also need a super, but again, it's also going to be slightly different. Again, underscore, underscore, init, underscore, underscore. And then we're going to pass here the parent. So this parent gets passed in. Up here, there was nothing passed in because that was the main app, right? So, okay. Now this parent thing is going to be useful. We're going to need that uh, pretty soon here. So, all right, right away, let's put this sucker on the screen. So to do that, we just self.pack this guy. And let's give this a pad Y of like 20. So I'm going to push it down 20 pixels from our button. And we just call self.pack because this is self. So we're just packing itself onto the screen. So, okay, that looks good. Now let's, I don't know, create a few buttons. If you're going to pack and we packed here and here, everything has to be pack. You can't sort of mix and match packing and gridding, except when you pack a frame, anything inside the frame, you can grid. That's why we created a frame because I want to put the buttons across in a line here. So let's create three buttons. Let's go self dot uh, my underscore button one. And that's going to be a button. We want to put it in self. We want the text to be, I don't know, change or, or whatever. And then we want to give this a command. We'll do that in just a second. So let's copy this guy and let's make three of these. And it's going to be button two and button three. And then we need to put these on the screen. So let's go self dot my underscore button one dot grid. Like I said, we want to grid these. And let's put this in row zero, uh, column zero. And let's give this a pad X of like 10 just to space them apart a little bit. So let me copy this and paste it in two more times. So this is going to be button two and button three. And this is going to be column one and column two. Okay, let's save this just to make sure this is working. Head back over here and run this guy again. And sure enough, we get these three buttons. Nice in a row there, they've been gridded. And this is an entire different frame class, right? But we've put it into our app and uh, looks good. So, okay, now the big question is, we want these buttons to be able to access this function. But this function, this change function is in our app, all right? So how do we access it? Well, remember, we passed in this parent, right? So we can access anything in the parent just by calling parent. like. All of these other times we're calling self, same thing. Instead of self dot something, it's going to be parent dot something. So let's come over here and let's give this a command of parent dot change. So let me copy this and let's add this to each of our buttons. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this, head back over here, run this one more time. And now we can click these buttons. They access that function. They change our text. This one still works too, as always. And very, very cool. So. This is a very nice way to sort of lay out things, create a frame, even if you don't really need a frame, frames are good to hold other widgets, right? So you always just want to create a frame and then put stuff in that frame. And then you can keep, like I said, all of your kind of widget layout code in a separate class, and then just call that class right here in your init function, wherever you want it to show up in your app, right? Very easy. And we could even pass these things, these widgets here, we could put them in this thing if we wanted to. I don't really want to. Like if we got rid of this and we moved them into that class, this whole thing becomes a lot easier to read. 
if we sort of maybe put all of our functions in the app class and maybe all of our widgets in the frame class, that might be a, a good strategy. Let me put those back. Uh, but either way, however you want to do it, whatever makes sense for your app. Is your app very complicated? Okay, break it apart. Is it very simple? You just have a few widgets here and there. Okay, just put them in the init function. That's perfectly fine. And that's how you do it. So this is class-based programming with tkinter. There's much more to learn about it. There's all kinds of hidden little pitfalls here and there that you need to know about. But the gist of it is this. And if you're familiar with object-oriented programming already, this is like making sense to you immediately, probably, right? This just is very simple. If object-oriented programming is a little bit new to you, this might be kind of like voodoo. And bear with me, we'll get through it and you'll sort of figure it out as we go along. You know, what are these things? Why are they there? What's this, you know, super thing? Why are we defining this? When, you know, if you don't understand object-oriented programming, this is Greek to you. But if you do know class-based programming, this is just, you know, old hat for you. And that's all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. And be sure to grab your totally free PDF copy of my Kinter Widget Quick Reference Guide book. I think it's awesome. Over 150 pages with all the Kinter Widget attributes. Grab your free copy today. Just head over to tkinter.com forward slash widget dash book in your email address and I'll send that right out to you. And while you're there, think about membership in tkinter.com. You get all my Kinter courses, all my future courses for one low price. Use coupon code YouTube to get 30% off membership if you're interested. My name is John Alder from tkinter.com and I'll see you in the next video.